This is a box, and it's a Seiko box at that. We've got the Seiko Speed Timer Mechanical today to cover. A couple weeks ago, I looked at the Seiko Speed Timer Solar. I felt like that was a solid watch, though I wasn't completely sold on the idea of a solar chronograph running for around $800 odd on the market. And I'm sure you can get a discount for them, but I just wasn't keen on that idea. So I thought I'd up the ante and bring this one in for review. It is a $4,000 <laughs> Seiko. That is a mechanical chronograph featuring the 8R46 movement. This is new for this year, 40, 45 hour power reserve, and it's missing a sub dial compared to its 8R48 sibling. Now the, uh, the watch itself and the way that it wears, it shares one common dimension. That's the case length. At 45.5 millimeters, the Seiko Speed Timer, Solar and Mechanical are going to be very wearable for wrists as small as 5.9 inches all the way up to 7 inches, no problem. Mind you, the way that these watches look uh, in comparison to size, you're looking at a 39mm case to a 42.5mm case diameter of the Speed Timer Mechanical. It's apparent. The heft of the watch is really, really obvious. It weighs nearly twice as much as the Speed Timer Solar. And that's because it's a thick one at that 15.1 millimeters in case thickness. I'll show you what that looks like on the wrist in a moment, but I want to talk about why I'm bringing these on for review. The Speed Timer Solar had a very good movement at that for solar movement, but the feeling and activation of the pusher was disappointing. It's mushy. The Chronograph Mechanical, the Speed Timer on the, on the left that you see here, it's got a wonderful feel. It is a column wheel vertical clutch movement, which means that you're getting very smooth, uninterrupted start-stop action of that chronograph pusher. Speed timer mechanical that you see here, I personally think it's better looking than its 1000 piece limited run Panda sibling. Uh, just my opinion, but I think the black and gray color scheme just works. The Seiko Solar Speed Timer has the exact same case length as the mechanical variant at 45.5 millimeters, meaning that within my six and a quarter inch uh, circumference wrist, it wears really well. It is 39 millimeters in diameter, which is smaller, and it does sit a little bit flatter on the wrist at 13.3 millimeters in depth. The Seiko Speed Timer Mechanical is a much more noticeable wearing watch on the wrist. And when I say noticeable, it is a chunkier timepiece. It is 15.1 millimeters thick, and that's probably the biggest drawback. Looking at it on my wrist, just down the barrel here, you can tell how proudly it sits on top. The benefit though, is that you have these very aggressive downturn lugs and the 42.5 millimeter case diameter, it is larger than the 39 millimeter of the solar variant, but it is something that I think works all right due to that uh, very similar lug to lug dimensions of 45.5 millimeters. Special thank you to Bezel House for helping me with this video and allowing me to review the Seiko Speed Timer Mechanical that you see here. Now, if I haven't lost you at the dimensions of this watch, you are getting something that is rather beautiful in finish work. The bezel that sits atop that watch is a conical bezel with a very elevated uh, look to it. The case is brushed all the way around, the top of the lugs to the side, the crown and pushers have this beautiful concentric uh, radial brushing. The overall feeling of the pushers is one of its strong points of this 8R46 movement, satisfying to activate and satisfying to reset, which is unlike that Seiko Solar Speed Time I reviewed last time. The feeling of the bracelet, uh, and mind you, it is actually using a pin and collar system, no screws here. Uh, unfortunately, it is something that Seiko could improve upon I'm not a big fan of the way this is executed, especially at this price point, but the way that the end links actually fit to the watch uh, give for a feeling of solidity. And I do like the way that the links are not super thin. In fact, looking at the solid end links behind it and the way that it's married to the watch like this, I feel like Seiko's done well to pair this watch up with this bracelet. I think this watch would look fantastic on a leather rally strap. Now this isn't a cheap watch though near $4,000 for this timepiece. This is Canadian, by the way. It's hard for someone to justify this unless they really, really love what the speed timer represents and a bit of Seiko heritage behind that.
One of Seiko's core strengths is how they execute their dials at any given price point. I think they're masters of that. And the SRQ037 is no exception. You can see the fine work that's been done on the subdials. There is tiny striations that give you a bit of texture to the subdials. The hands on the chronograph side of things with the subdials, they are white tipped and you're getting a nice train track that runs around the subdials too. A very accurate uh, seconds breakdown near the tachymeter all around the dial is visible with cream-like uh, indices that are the loom plots actually. Now speaking of the indices, you might notice that they're very familiar to the Seiko 1964 crown chronograph that is. They're nearly identical. They have that monolithic, almost brutalist kind of um, design to them. They sit proudly on the dial and they catch light in a beautiful, stunning manner. The hand stack is good. And I see that it is uh, the hands themselves, they do reflect light, like almost like black polish. They're gorgeous. The Seiko logo sits proudly on the dial and it is executed wonderfully with no flaws that I can notice. Now to address the elephant in the room, would I personally buy the SRQ037 mechanical speed timer? Given that if money was no option, I definitely would. And if I was a diehard Seiko fan and um, I admired the chronographs of the past, like the 1964 Crown Chrono, this is something that is kind of a modern interpretation um, using elements of that watch, but making something new out of it. It is a stunning piece. The finish work, the feeling of the movement, and I forgot to mention, that you can actually adjust the 30 minute totalizer while you have that chronograph hand running. If you pull up the crown, you can adjust it individually, which I thought was interesting. The movement inside the mechanical speed timer is a good one. Five seconds per day accuracy is what I measured. I do wish that there was a manual wind no date option to slim down the case. In fact, if I could take the speed timer solar and that case that it had and move the, take out the movement and swap in that mechanical movement, I think that would be a winning watch. The thing is though, the solar speed timer exists as an entryway into a Seiko chronograph. It is not something new. There are, there have been solar chronographs that Seiko has done for the past 30 odd years that are all wonderful. The Sportura lineup has been one of the very most technical solar chronographs that you can get out there. Now, if you like today's review, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. But I'm going to show you the loom here, and the loom on both these watches are good. However, the Speed Timer Mechanical takes it a notch higher. It has loom all the way around instead of just at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 on the Solar variant. I'm not a big fan of that. The longevity of the loom is pretty good. Um, there's gratuitous amounts of loom material on the hands, but I do feel like the indices fade faster than the hands. That could just be due to the fact that it has less material, loom material. Now, if you guys are keen on checking out more videos like this, I will be having more watches in for review. Please subscribe and support the channel as it would help me bringing more content to you.